Hey everybody, it's Krista with Magnolia Ridge Farm and Gardens and I had not intended to film today. I don't have my tripod. I've actually lost my tripod. But I've been thinking about this video for a while and so I thought I would just set the camera up while I'm up potting and start talking. So here we go. So I don't know how well you're going to be able to hear me. So I may have to voice over this. My husband is working on the high tunnel beds, which I'm super excited about. That area is coming along. My garden area, not so much, um, just because I've been spending all my time in here trying to get everything done and I've had to work. So I've had a hard time filming lately. As you can probably tell, I've been missing for like a month, which I had no idea it had been so long until I uploaded a little video last week that I had actually made for our local school system because they were doing a career thing and asking people to send in videos of their careers and they were looking for a farmer and somebody had referred me and so I said sure I'll make one so I did it and sent it in and decided to upload it to YouTube and I I did it and marked it for kids because I had made it for elementary children and it's done weird things to my channel so I don't know what that's about but anyway I've been struggling with the whole YouTube thing I've been active on Instagram I have not been active on Facebook because they took my account which they didn't really take it it's still there but I'm locked out of it so I am not pushing getting back into it though you know a lot of my market people follow me on YouTube so that kind of sucks I'm trying to figure that out but I've been on this weird journey this year and YouTube was kind of my creative outlet. I started it last year. And I thought, you know, this year is going to be great because I own a photography business. And I don't think I've ever really talked about that on here. But I am a wedding photographer. I have been for 10 years. My husband and I do it together. Uh, we've done pretty well. And we were preferred vendors at several venues, one of them a pretty big venue in the area. So we had pretty consistent business. Um, and during the pandemic, you know, all the venues were shut down. They weren't allowed to have events. And so my business just, everything stalled. We had to postpone weddings and, you know, my, I didn't have any money coming in. But my husband, he was able to work from home for his job. And so we were okay. So we went through 2021 and, you know, things didn't really get back to normal with the weddings um, because people would come up with COVID or their guests, major people in their party and they would postpone again or, you know, people had lost jobs. And so it was just like 2021 was a little crazy because it was still very much for me and my business it was still very much pandemic and so you know the garden was growing I was expanding because I didn't have anything else to do and I kind of fell back in love with the farm life that I had grown up in and I've talked about that before the last year while we weren't full tilt weddings I was busy enough 
that between doing the farm and growing this passion and my wedding business picking back up again, I was very overwhelmed. I was stressed out. Um, I, I stopped doing a lot of YouTube videos, you know, when business picked up in the spring. And it was because I had no time. And something had to go. And since I don't consider myself a content creator, because I don't get paid for YouTube. I mean, I'm small time. It would be nice, actually, because well, I'll get to that in a minute. But anyway... So YouTube's the first thing to go. Well, we made the decision to scale back the photography business based on being overwhelmed, looking at the economy, looking at what's going on in our society um, with our broken food systems, um, and just in general, the way society is. We felt that there was very valuable lessons to be had with our family in bringing them close to home and making sure they had a good source of sustainable food, healthy food that's not full of whatever is in it when you buy it in the store. Let's just, let's just say that. So, we made the decision last fall after being so overwhelmed and stressed out. And you know, you have to remember, my husband is my partner in everything. I mean, we are very close. We've been together, I don't know, 18, 19 years, since 2004. And so yeah, 19 years. And he shoots weddings with me. And I do all the editing and you know, all that stuff. But he's there with me at bridal shows and he's there with me at weddings. So, and then he works a full-time nine to, or eight to five job and with overtime um, when they need it because he does IT stuff. And then we have this farm and then we have two children who are preteens now. Um, this month they both, they are 10 and 12 now. And they have, you know, active after school lives with Boy Scouts and dance and he and I are very active in that. And so we were very overwhelmed. And so we made the decision after looking at things, we were like, okay, we survived. We will um, cut back on the photography business and build this farm and do that. So we made that decision. And I guess we didn't really take into account inflation. Like, we knew it was going on. We had felt the effects of it. But we didn't have time. Like, our biggest thing is we had no time. We were tired. We were exhausted. And um, now I have to write and talk at the same time. But, um... Yeah, we were, we were just tired, so we decided that we were going to make a go of it without the wedding business. And we were going to set our max of too many weddings per year. And in doing that, we looked at the marketing plan and the budget for the wedding business and all that, and we decided that we needed to pull out of some of our venue commitments and stuff. Well, that also greatly reduced our visibility. So that cut our traffic down a great deal, which, you know, we, we were hoping for. But then comes inflation, more and more inflation, and um, some unexpected deals with some things that we took on, and uh, one of them being these sweet little trio of goats and we're three thousand dollars in on the vet bills now and just things happen and we've really felt the effects of not having my business anymore and 
it's like now we have more time, but we don't have the money. And that's not really something we were totally expecting, honestly. So, I've kind of been in a funk about that. Like, did I make the right decision? And during all of this, I'm also walking a new relationship with God. And I say that because I've, I've been a Christian pretty much my whole life. But there were times in my life that I questioned my faith or I was not very faithful. But I have been very intentional over the past year. Um, and it has been growing and growing. And now, you know, I'm involved in a Bible study uh, twice a week. We go to church. My kid, we found a church that we love. And... I have been pursuing this walk with God and trying to listen to what God tells me. And I felt that God told me to walk this path, to raise my children with intentionality and, you know, back to a more simple life, um, to counterbalance some of the things going on in society. And that's actually been kind of hard because that, you know, that takes up time, but it's worth it. And I volunteered my time with our local extension office because I wanted to help people in the community. I still, I felt like I was kind of isolated in this, you know, my job as a wedding photographer, yes, I get to see people at events, but you know, you're you're talking about 25 to 40 times a year when you include bridal shows and meetings and, you know, stuff like that. But it's kind of an isolating job sitting behind a computer doing social media editing. And then here I was moving into a farm life, which, as you can see, is also very isolating. My plants don't talk back. My goats talk back, and sometimes my chickens talk back. But my plants do not talk mm -hmm. back. And so I got involved with the extension office. One, because I love some of their classes and certifications. And, you know, I thought that would help me grow, which it has immensely. But two, to give back to the community. So here I am getting involved with that. Um, expanding my walk with God. Trying to live a life that would be more honorable to the way he wants us to live. Um, focusing on family, focusing on building this homestead, but it's it's a lot of work and also working with my family on their farm because I have found joy in reconnecting in that aspect as well. So all of this has kind of come to a head in this past month because I overwhelmed myself and I have a little anxiety about that. And I look at things I know this is rambling because there's just kind of so much that I'm, I'm just talking about, but in business, I have always refrained from speaking politics, um, showing, you know, I've been very neutral because in the wedding industry, you don't know what people's beliefs are when you meet them. All you know is that they love each other and they want to get married and you want to tell their story for them on their day. Some couples we have connected with immensely. Some of them we have become lifelong friends with. And I have photographed their growing families. And others are just, you know, passing ships in the night. But as you do these events, you actually witness family connections, friendship dynamics. And a lot of times even political views and stuff. And I started feeling a few years ago that maybe accepting everything was not the right idea. Because I had some issues with some things that happened. And 
some things made me feel really uncomfortable, but I was there to witness. And, but I started feeling very uncomfortable with things. And that was another reason I kind of wanted to take a step back. But I still maintain, even on YouTube, I've maintained this idea that, you know, I keep my opinion to myself and I don't make waves because then people aren't going to like me. And, you know, that, that may stem from a, a place in my life that I could probably dive deep on. Um, I've always been kind of a divisive, divisive person because I've always been kind of strong-willed. But at the same time, I've always held back certain things about myself because I wanted to be liked. And, you know, I never felt like I was truly liked as a person. And so the things in my life that I knew were divisive, like maybe my political views or some of the rabbit trails I like to go down when um, researching, because I love to research and read up on things and, you know, this, that, and the other. I just kind of leave them to the side. But it's funny because some of the channels I watch the most are some of the probably most divisive channels there are. And they speak their minds and... I'm like, why can't I? So, it, I have an issue, like, I've been struggling with what do I want to say? What do I want to film? I have been filming, like, I've been filming things in the garden and stuff, but actually putting them into a video that, you know, someone may want to watch has been where I've kind of failed because it's, it, I almost feel like it should be like ASMR, like, you don't want to hear me say anything. But maybe you just want to watch me plant the garden or whatever. But that's not really what I do. So, anyway. I've struggled with how much to say. What I should say. The direction I want my channel. Because I'm interested in so many things. And I want to be authentic. And I want to be real with people. But that might include, you know, some of my thoughts. And why I'm doing some of the things that I'm doing. And, you know, maybe I am a little crazy. Um... I don't know. But one of the things that I've been studying in church and, and some of the sermons that have really spoken to me is what God wants you to do is to go out and tell the story. Go out and witness. You know, witness that Jesus is our Savior and witness that God is our God and, you know, that everything has been foretold and, you know whether you believe the end is near or not. I don't know what I believe when it comes to that, honestly. But witness. Go out and witness. Go out and speak your tr the truth. And I hate the term your truth because it's become kind of a catch-all. Everybody has a different truth and everybody's truth is okay. And, you know, it's your truth. Well, no, it's not. I'm sorry, but I don't believe that. I believe that there is truth, that there is fact, and you may choose to believe differently, and maybe I'm wrong, and maybe you're wrong, but not everybody's truth is correct. One of us is wrong. So, I'm not speaking just my truth. I'm speaking what I wholeheartedly believe, and maybe I'm wrong on some things, but why should I be silent when the rest of the world is hammering at our every move and ear? And, and then the other part of me says, because everybody's narcissistic and they want their moment in the sun and they want their social media fame. And I guess I can see the appeal of that too. I'm not going to deny that. But I come at this more from a place of loneliness and a place of isolation, a place of reaching out to connect to people and have a creative outlet because I'm no longer, you know, photographing as much. And, you know, that's another thing. Like, I feel bad because 
I film all this stuff on my phone. It's easy. It's what I have with me. I have camera equipment. I could do better. I could probably figure out how to make beautiful cinematic videography, although I'm not a videographer. I'm a still life photographer, but you know, I could do better and I know I could do better, but it's also, I'm one of those people who I just want to get the work done. You know, oftentimes I pick up the camera after I'm done and I say, okay, this is what I did. This is what I planted. This is what it looks like because I'm not one to take that extra time and set up a camera to make good content. I'm, I'm just, I'm not a content create, creator, but I would like the freedom of using this platform as a creative outlet, which means I probably should get my cameras and my drones and everything else out and, you know, play with it. But on the other hand, I don't have time. And so again, that's the first thing that goes is something that I deem maybe not so important and we always put ourselves last and unfortunately my connection to the outside world my escape from loneliness into a creative area which is you guys and YouTube gets put on the back burner because this needs doing and you know garden beds need amending and children need to be fed so I've just been stuck in this monotonous fight with myself over spending the time to get out a video to keep up with my work but I think the work we're doing is valuable I mean we're building this high tunnel garden from complete scratch just us no plans no gardener supply kit, no help from, you know, a sponsor. Like, it is just us with this old used high tunnel that we found basically from somebody who had some on the side of the road and we noticed they weren't using them. And we started asking around and they sold it to us. And we took it down and we don't know what we're doing. We're just doing it. Because I think that based on the climate, the changes, I hate that word too, climate change, um, but based on the weather patterns and the society and everything else that we're seeing, I want the option of growing undercover. Will it be undercover this year? Probably not, because now I can't afford to put it undercover. But if we've got the frame, and we're building the garden, so I can use the garden space as an outdoor area, and we'll go from there. And, you know, I'm trying to do farmer's market, and that's actually going pretty good. I mean, we sold out of chicken over the winter because people came out to our house instead of waiting for market to open. So now I'm starting market with no chicken. So, you know, we're... We're building and we're trying to do it slow and we're trying to do it thoughtfully and we're trying to do it at a sustainable pace because it's just us and so you know I war with myself on what to say where do I want to go with this channel do I want to just keep doing well this is what I'm doing because I don't know that that's really necessarily interesting or do I want to talk about all this stuff do I want to talk about my struggle because it's real it's what i go through it's not necessarily the perfect pretty part of gardening and homesteading is this potential lonely life um my kids are in school they'll be out in three weeks and then they'll be home and i want to make sure that i do fun things with them while they are home for the summer I do not homeschool. I know that's actually kind of a big thing with a lot of homesteaders, but it's not for us. Uh, it is not for me. And I definitely learned that during the pandemic when they were home and I had to take more of a hands-on role. I love teaching, but I like teaching the things that I'm passionate about. I was asked for years to take on... Um, 
interns and to teach photography and to teach photography classes. And I wouldn't do it. And while I'm passionate about photography and beautiful images and um, things like that, I was not passionate about teaching that. It just was not something that I wanted to do. But teaching someone how to preserve food or grow food or can food, that I'm passionate about. And I always kind of have been. I mean, back in, gosh, 2000 and six, I guess, when my husband and I first got married, I was doing a food blog, and I think I've mentioned that before, and I think I even may have linked it, because it's still out there, and, um, you know, so it was something I was passionate about sharing was, you know, good recipes, and a, the blog was called The Garden Gourmet, because I was passionate about taking things from the garden and making recipes, so that is something I've always loved and been passionate about so that has not changed um let me take these out so that has not changed in almost gosh 20 years um but is that what i make this channel do i just make this channel a food blog and maybe that would be the easiest thing but then, I don't have anyone to share all these crazy thoughts and the passion of the garden and my walk with Jesus and all the things that I am learning in the Bible that I never knew and trying to make my life a better one. Um, be a better wife. I mean, my relationship is great, I think. I mean, we don't have major problems. We don't fight. Um, we have disagreements. We're not perfect. I mean, he could be thinking in his head that he hates me, but I mean, I would never know. Like, we don't. I, that, that's not true. Like, we have a good relationship. We love our children. He's a hard worker. He provides. But, you know, biblically, I've probably not been a good wife. And I could do better. And I want to do the best by my children and give them the best possible life. And I want them to have these wonderful memories of summers on the farm. Summers um, of freedom. Because I don't know that they're gonna have that always. I don't know that our world is going to continue in a way that children will have these wonderful carefree childhoods um they're already inundated inundated if i can speak correctly with social media and all this nonsense and mental illness and craziness that is out there and our political landscape is just absolutely toxic my dog is after a um, carpet bee. That is not going to taste good if you get it. But, um, oh, she got it. But yeah, so, like, and my son is 12, and he has noticed, and he has started asking questions, and started saying things, and, I mean, he's, he's astute. He's very, very smart. And he knows what feels natural and what feels morally right and what seems just completely against nature and completely against just what's crazy to him. At 12 years old, he knows. And he finds it hard to deal with um, at school. 
and which our school is fantastic like it's not in your face it's not pushing agendas it's a, a very small charter school and they're very careful about respecting parents wishes and you know I'm happy that when a teacher has disrespected a parent's wishes in regards to their child she was fired immediately so you know there there is that so so far I am not unhappy with our school and the environment that it presents but it's there because these kids have TikTok and these kids have phones mine do not I mean they do like they have our old phones and they can access um, things when they have Wi-Fi, but they do not have TikTok accounts. They do not have Snapchat accounts, Snapchat. Um, they have Facebook Messenger, which we can see everything they say. And um, we kind of keep an eye on what they're watching and other things that they say and, you know, stuff like that. They're pretty good kids. My daughter, she would be the one that is most most influenced. Um, she's the one that I worry the most about with like screen time. Uh, my son is very outdoorsy, and you know he likes being in the garden. He likes helping, and you know, he goes to my friends and helps her with her yard work because she's got knee problems right now. So. But he's like a boy scout and like he lives it. So there's that. But anyway, so like I have all these thoughts and I have all these highs and lows and everyday struggles. Even living this, you know, what some people think is this romantic farming life. And, you know, you see these memes that say behind every homesteading Instagram or whatever is a husband with a tech degree or you know a, a job in IT and I laugh because I mean honestly that is us but I've also earned money and you know ran two businesses and we just we, we made those decisions together after lots of talks and you know it, it may come to you with this economy that I can't maintain this um, and we need more money than what the farm is bringing in and we've already talked about that and I've already looked at some job options whether that be going back to the photography which I'm still doing like we we just did a wedding this weekend as well as a graduation and so I'm kind of bogged down in editing right now and you know next week I'm doing photos for a dance school so you know it's not like I've stopped I just cut way back. I'm not planning to do 35 weddings this year. I, I'm willing to do a max of 10. So that changes the money a lot. smells so good. This is the Sartre Roloi tomato. It's new for me this year. And my goodness, it smells amazing. So, anyway, I don't know where I was before I stopped to refill. I guess The whole point of this is to just say, I'm confused about where I want to go, how I want to use this platform, how much I want to share. I always want to be real, but do I want to have a curated channel or just use it as an outlet I mean that's kind of how I started it but it's like I just have so many different things I just don't know 
where to stop and where to start. I don't ever do social media the way it's supposed to. I've, I've never had curated Instagram feeds with, you know, the same filter and the blah, blah, blah. And even on my photography page, it was just whatever picture I was editing that struck me. And, you know, I had a lot of night pictures and a lot of day pictures, and they would kind of vary. So, I never did these, you know, everything light and airy with every sixth block blue or I don't know. That's just, I am not a curated person. My house is not perfect. It's not this beautiful little white and gray farmhouse with fresh flowers and flat lays and uh, those things are beautiful. I love them, but my life is chaos. My brain is chaos. Um, example, I woke up last night after a horrible, horrible dream that was just a straight nightmare and it put me into a full-blown panic attack. And even though I've had anxiety now for Let's see, my son is 12, and my first bouts of anxiety came with postpartum depression. So, 12 years now, I'm still getting used to the idea that I have anxiety. Like, it just, like, every time I have a panic attack, it shocks me. Um, is that taboo to talk about? I mean, here I am, this, living this idyllic garden life with wonderful herbs and medications and she's a hot mess with anxiety I cook all these wonderful foods and I have a weight problem um, I don't know I guess my life has no filter so I don't know where my social media would have a filter oh a chicken has gotten in here so I need to go help my husband get her out. Anyway, thank you for joining me today and uh, I'll see you on the next one.